This meeting is being recorded per Governor Lamont's Executive Order 7B. All right. Well, good evening. Thanks for your patience, everybody, and welcome to the November 2020 virtual meeting of the Weathersfield Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, quick rundown of the agenda for tonight. We have five applications. We will first go through our public hearing on each of the five applications uh, where we will hear a uh, presentation from the applicant. Any questions from the commissioners? We will invite anybody during the hearing who is wishing to speak either in favor or in opposition to any of the applications. And we will close the public hearing and move into our public meeting, which is the point where the commissioners discuss and then take a vote on each of the applications. We have, uh, we'll have five voting members for each application and a vote of at least four yeas is needed to get approval uh, on the application. So three, two in favor does not actually get approval of the variance. Uh, it has to be four, one or five, zero. And then after we get through our public meeting, we have minutes from our last meeting, which was actually July to approve. We'll open up for any other comment or business on any matters related to the zoning board. And if time allows, we will look to formalize our officers and then we will adjourn for the evening. So with that, um, Elizabeth, if you first, um, and I don't know, Charles, if you want to offer input, you had mentioned doing a roll call at the beginning. Uh, was that just of the commissioners or are you wanting to see if all of the applicants are here as well, Charles? The commissioners, please. Okay. All right, so um, do you want to do that roll call, Charles, just to make sure everybody is here that you're expecting to be here? Oh, and then okay. we'll let Elizabeth, sure, we'll sure, let Elizabeth sure, read the applications. Sure. Okay. Okay, so uh, John, John Gustafson. Present. Sandra Weileba. She was muted. I believe she was uh, answering. Sandy, you're here. She's here. She's probably muted. I don't know. Yeah, she was waving on the video. I could see that. So she's, uh, she's acknowledging through video if that is acceptable. Could you un unmute yourself, please? Okay. Did All that do right. It? So we have John Gustafson, we have Sandy Weilbert, then we have Daniel Bailewick. Present. Elizabeth Keys, James Pelletier, Paul Brady, Rita and yeah. Owen. Here. Yeah. And um, that's about it. And uh, we have Julie, the uh, board secretary is on board, I guess. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Well, Elizabeth, if you would read the first application, please. Certainly. Application number one, application number 623620, variance from section 4.1C, agricultural zone dimensional requirements, to allow side yard setback of 20 feet as against 25 minimum feet minimum required, variance requested for the installation of a generator at southern side of the building, residential zone AG. Location 144 Elm Street, applicant Nancy R. N. Earl. All right, Charles, is there a staff report for this application? Yes, Mr. Chairman. So um, a little background to, to this uh, application here. Uh, this applica an application was submitted to the uh, department uh, for an installation of a standby generator at the Southern side of the building at 144 Elm Street. So uh, the zoning review revealed that the agricultural zone requires a minimum side yard setback of 25 feet. And the applicant had indicated a 20 feet uh, setback for the generator. Uh, notwithstanding that the Northern side of the building currently has a setback of 7.5 feet which may be legally non-conforming, uh, any new alteration of the building must conform with the regulations. Therefore, the application was denied and the applicant was duly advised 
and the variance application was was uh, submitted. Uh, when I checked the records, uh, Mr. Chairman, I found that there, there was no prior uh, variance on record for, for this property. So um, minimum setback uh, required is um, 25 feet. There's already a 7.5 foot on one side, which is legally non-conforming. Uh, we must meet the required setback for any new uh, addition. So the applicant is now applied to the ZBA for variance and um, the applicant is here with us tonight. Um, and that is to allow a side yard setback of 20 feet as against 25 feet required for the placement of a standby generator as shown on the plot plan submitted. As zoning officer, I, I have no concerns um, regarding the granting of this variance, uh, bearing in mind that the Northern side of the building is already legally non-conforming and um, and this southern end has um, the closest building to, to this southern end of the property is over 100, I should say at best over 150 feet away. Um, so that's my submission, uh, Mr. Chairman. There's a, and um, you have seen the plot plan which shows the layout of this uh, application for the generator. Okay, thank you. And uh, can I ask uh, the applicant uh, just to correct us if we're, is it Eno or Eno? And, and you're muted, I'm sorry. Uh, Eno. Eno, okay. Ms. Eno, uh, would you like to present um, your application? Yeah, I mean, he's pretty much summed it up. I just wanna put a, a standby generator, 20 kilowatt, standby generator on that side of my house. Um, it's 20 feet versus 25 feet from the property line. Um, there's really no other location where it would, would be suitable for it. So um, that's pretty much it. Charles has pretty well summed it up. All right, do you have a, an approximate size? Uh, is this the drawing we have, is that pretty much to scale? I think so, yeah. I mean, that my contractor drew it, so it's a- okay. It's a 20 kilowatt generator. The pad is there. Charles saw the pad when he came out. Um, you know, they put it there be before they applied for the, for the first permit. So the pad's been sitting there <laughs> with nothing on it. So. Okay. Um, tell you what, I'm going to, if uh, commissioners don't mind, because I'm not sure I'm going to be able to see everybody on screen all, all the time. So I'm going to run through a quick roll call, see if anybody has questions for the applicant. Um, Dan, any questions? No questions. Okay, Elizabeth. It doesn't seem like this would have any impact. But have you heard? Have we heard anything from the neighbors? Um, because it just no, no, I've not had any feedback from the neighbors. It seems like you're, you're there's there's no one on that side of the property that's very close to begin with. So. No, it's it's Anderson Farm, and I I spoke with Mr. Anderson, and he he has no problem. I mean, it's the it's the farmhouse that the farm workers use for the summer, but it's empty for the rest of the year. Great, nothing, nothing. Okay, Rita? No, no questions. All right, Paul? No questions. All right, Jim? I'm all set, thanks. All right, and do you prefer Sandra or Sandy? Uh, Sandy's fine. Okay. No questions, any... I looked it over, it looks good. Okay, all right. Uh, Mizzino, any additional information you wanna share with us? No, I don't think so. I appreciate your time. Okay. Uh, at this time, if we have anybody on the call who wishes to speak in support of the application for variance, Charles, are you aware if we have anybody wishing to speak on this one? No, I don't have anyone that um, wishes to speak either for or against the application, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so we'll just do one last pass. Anybody wishing to speak either for or against this application? All right, the record will show no one spoke up. Uh, with that, Elizabeth, if you'll read in the second application. All right, number two, application 623720, variance from section 5.2, B2, permitted principal uses to allow a religious institution in the agricultural zone, agricultural zone AG, location 105 Marsh Street, application, uh, applicant Kevin Timbering. 
Okay, and just to confirm, uh, like I said, I don't have a full view of everyone. Do we have Mr. Timbro with us? Yes, I'm here. Uh, hello, everyone. Okay. My wife. Uh, Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Charles, I'll start with you. You have a staff report for this application? Yes, yes Mr. Chairman. So um, the background to this is that um, on November 7th, 2016, the Zoning Board of Appeals received an application requesting a use variance to permit a church at property known as 105 Marsh Street, Weathersfield CT. This property is located in the agricultural zone and churches are not permitted in this zone. Uh, and as such, uh, a variance is required for, um, for that use. Uh, also pursuant to section uh, 10, for F4 of the zoning regulations of Weathersfield, uh, the application was referred to the Planning and Zoning Commission, and um, they did not have any uh, comments presently regarding this application. Uh, the then applicant and um, the applicant at that at, at November. The applicant um, in 2016 was for, um, was Mark Shebert of 35 Terrace Road, Wethersfield. And the owner was James Clinch of 903 Ridge Road in Wethersfield. So um, just to recap, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm referring to the application that was made on uh, in 2016 and not this present application. So uh, on November 15, 2016, uh, the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission reviewed the application and they requested that a full site analysis be conducted prior to the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. On November 23rd, 2016, uh, Peter Gillespie, the town planner and the then CEO visited the site and um, they made the following comments for consideration by the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, the first thing that they commented on was that um, there are several areas where curbing is missing along the edges of the driveway and that should be repaired. And this driveway that I'm referring to is the one that leads from the first uh, entrance to the property when you travel east along um, along Marsh Road before you make that, that, that bend to go towards the highway. Uh, so the, the drive, and that's the driveway that runs um, along the western edge, edge of the property must only be used as an entrance. So this, this driveway that I'm referring to Mr. Chairman, um, it was suggested that that be used only as an entrance and that the, the relevant signage and pavement markings be put in place. And that was, um, that was a recommendation from the, uh, the town engineer. Number three was that any broken edges of pavement in the drive aisles and parking spaces should be repaired. There are currently 21 parking spaces um, this is adequate for up to 84 seats within the church, and this far exceeds the current proposal of 40 seats. So at that time, the proposal for the number of seats in the church uh, would be 40. I have not seen a proposal for any seating uh, number at this time. So any seating beyond 84 uh, seats would require additional parking and a new site plan approval. The required and provided handicap parking space must be compliant with ADA required dimensions. There are currently three light posts in the parking area and um, no lighting is required. However, if it is determined by the applicant that lighting is required, any new lighting will be required to comply with the current zoning regulations and lighting requirements. All lights must be cut off. 
there is no street address on the front of the building. The number is required to be placed for emergency response. The applicant will need to ensure that the building is compliant with the required building codes to be used as a place of assembly. This would include complete ADA accessibility and various other life safety codes. The Weathersfield Building Department will require architectural plans to ensure that compliance is met. There is a fallen tree to the rear of the property that should be removed as some of the debris from the tree blocks a portion of the parking space. And last of all, uh, the scrub and brush along the white fence should be cleared per uh, town property maintenance code. So the property was used, the property use was not reviewed by the Planning and Zoning Commission. The applicant at that time submitted to the board information outlining the proposed operational structure of the building, including floor layout, the number of persons to be accommodated in the building and the full description of the use of every segment of the building. The variance was granted by the ZBA on November 28th, uh, 2016, with the above mentioned items listed by the town planner and the CEO as conditions of approval including the addition of a stipulation that states as follows. And it says, um, one way, install a one way do not enter sign on either side of the driveway at the intersection with the parking lot. Two, the property owner must trim and continually maintain existing shrubbery in the front yard so as to maximize sightline distances for vehicles traveling eastbound and Marsh Street and making a left turn into the driveway. The variance was not filed on the land records. Neither was the property used for a church. And to the best of my knowledge, the property remained unoccupied up until this point in time. The applicant has now applied to the Board of Appeals for the said variance for the property located in the agricultural zone to be used as a church, contrary to the provisions of section 52B2 of the zoning regulation, which does not expressly permit a re religious institution in the agricultural zone. The current application was brought to the attention of the Planning and Zoning Commission at their meeting on November 17th, 2020, and the commission offered no, no uh, comments or objections. It should also be noted by the applicant uh, that any exterior work to be done on the property may require a certificate of appropriateness from the Historic District uh, Commission. There you go, Mr. Chairman. That's my um, report on the application for this variance. Okay, thank you. Um, can I just ask a clarifying question before we hear from the applicants? So the uh, just so we're all clear on this, there was a variance that came before the ZBA in November 2016 that was approved, but it was never completed. Is that it, it was approved with stipulations, and those stipulations are what I read um, from the recommendation from the Planning and Zoning Commission. And um, the reason why that that um, variance became null and void is that um, it was not filed under land records. And okay. any, variance, any variance that's granted by the Board of Appeals must be filed on the land records after 15 days of publication in the local newspaper before it can become uh, active. Okay, and so to, uh, just to further clarify that approval from November 2016 was never filed and so is null and void. So we're hearing this as a new application for variance, but you have discussed it recently with planning and zoning and they had no additional comment. Right. That's okay. correct. Thank you for that. Um, with that, if uh, the Timbros would like to walk us through the application, that would be wonderful. Yes. Hello, everyone. Um, Charles, thanks so much for going through that extensive uh, list uh, from the prior application. Uh, but uh, my wife and I uh, moved to Weathersfield about five years ago and um, really fell in love with the community, fell in love with uh, what Weathersfield had to offer. And uh, 
we've always had this passion and this call to plant a church. And uh, we really felt like God was calling us to plant here in Weathersfield. So uh, February 2020, uh, to be exact, February 23rd of 2020, we launched Generation Church uh, over at Webb Elementary School. So we were meeting in Webb Elementary School's auditorium and cafeteria. Uh, we had the kids space in the cafeteria, and then we, were, we had the worship experience for the adults in the, uh, uh, in the auditorium. And uh, we launched with about 200 people attending uh, our church. And then three weeks later, uh, got shut down by a global pandemic. <laughs> so uh, didn't anticipate this, didn't uh, realize what was going on. Um, you know, it's not something that we planned for, uh, but knew that we had to pivot and we had to shift. And um, we ended up moving completely virtual to an online worship experience. So ever since uh, Mar uh, February, well, March 12th, really, that's when we found out. So uh, ever since March, we've been a virtual church streaming online every Sunday uh, at 10 a.m. through YouTube and Facebook. And um, we also have Zoom meetings going with our uh, small groups that we have. So we try to continue to build community and stay in touch. Uh, we participated in the back to school backpack drive um, here in town where our church came together and donated over 7,000 items to the students in Weathersfield. Uh, we're partnering with uh, local food banks and other churches in the area with the Thanksgiving food drive coming up. And so our heart really is here in Weathersfield. And when we came across 105 Marsh Street, um, you know, this was a property that we had looked at a few times. And although, you know, it's, it's a house, uh, we definitely saw it working in in our uh, for our for our worship experiences, and um, you know in the current climate that we're in with COVID nineteen, uh, we are really focusing on more of a uh, more of a micro gathering type of setting where it's going to be smaller groups uh, gathering together, multiple services, and so uh, after carefully considering and and uh, talking with our with our board, we just knew that this was a property that could work for us for a period of time. And so uh, we ended up having a conversation with Peter Gillespie and just kind of talking through what this would look like and uh, had a meeting with Charles and a few of the other zoning um, committees. And uh, basically we're here to uh, start the ball rolling on, every, on everything and seeing what we need to do to get this property ready and set um, in order to start gathering. Did I miss anything? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I said I just said he did good. <laughs> okay. Very good. Um, a couple of questions, and I'll, I'll go around the horn again. Um, so do you own the property at 105? We do not own the property. Um, uh, Jim Clinch still owns the property. Uh, okay. We are leasing right now from him. Okay. Um, and you heard, obviously, Charles went through the uh, rather extensive list of stipulations that we had had last time around with the property. Anything in there um, that you anticipate having issues with or changing dramatically? I, I guess particularly the uh, capacity that uh, it's approved for, it sounded like up to 84. Yeah, that, that, that wouldn't be an issue at all uh, in regards to capacity because uh, we actually have a church software that allows people to register. So that's kind of how we would do it. A lot of churches are having people register to come to uh, to service. So that's kind of the approach that we would take. And we'd kind of really know who's coming for what specific service. And um, so capacity, you know, we, we are not anticipating would be an issue. Okay. Um, all right. I'm going to uh, open it up and I'll go in uh, opposite order of how I did the first time. So uh, Sandy, any questions for the applicants? Would the other stipulations now be part of this, the one-way drive sign, would those also be incorporated? Uh, That's my question. Is that a question for me? Yeah. Okay, so so what I did, I, I just went through the um, findings of the, of the Planning and Zoning Commission and the stipulations that was attached to the, um, to the previous uh, uh, approval. I, I mean, I'm not necessarily suggesting that these be added to the to the um, to the approval, if any. But the board will look at it, and in their view, what they see fit. If they see it fit that um, all these stipulations be attached to an approval that's granted tonight, then that's up to the board entirely. Okay. Yeah. Thank so when we get to our public meeting, Sandy, and there's a motion, the motion can include any or all of those same stipulations. 
Thank you. Yep. Uh, Jim, any questions for the applicants or for Charles? Yeah, I was going to ask. This property has not been, um, it's been vacant for many years, hasn't it? Prior to, prior to yeah. you guys leasing it. Yeah. Yep. Yes, it has been vacant. We have had um, several inquiries about it, but no one uh, took it up. And when did you start leasing it? October. October, October okay. Okay, great. Okay, I was curious because it's been, uh, as long as I lived here, it's been vacant. So congratulations and uh, bringing it back to life. Thank you, that's great. Thank you, <laughs> we're trying. <laughs> All right, Paul, any questions? Actually, I do have a question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, for the applicant, you said that you guys are going to have uh, all the members register on the day of them coming to service. Um, what would that look like, uh, per se? Like, how, what's the capacity you're expecting? I'm just taking into consideration that now we're dealing with a pandemic. And even though I saw that there was some form of precedent set that, you know, there was a variance, well, technically granted, um, this is a different, this, these are different circumstances. So um, what is that going to look like? Yeah, so we don't expect that we'll really even be doing um, services probably until the spring, at least just because of the pandemic, or if we do, it'll be more like our core type of invitation only meeting. So we can do the virtual experience that will be like live pre-recording. So it'll be really controlled um, until this whole thing is figured out. I think the biggest thing for us right now is that we don't even have an opportunity. Um, like we're recording church in our basement currently. So to have a spot that we could do live pre-recordings and have a specific group of people and then gradually and slowly move to um, services as restrictions ease and people feel comfortable. And, you know, we are super self, not really self-conscious, but just conscious of the pandemic. We have three little kids too. So it's really just the starting point for us. Yeah. And we will, we will also follow all sorts of uh, guidelines set by the CDC and the, the governor's orders to have, you know, sanitation stations and our volunteers uh, wearing masks and requiring masks to Tempor enter temperature en checks, temperature checks at the building. Um, so uh, we had two outdoor gatherings at Webb, um, one in September and then one in November. And uh, we followed all those protocols, uh, worked with the physical services department and um, Joanne McPhee at the, um, at the board of ed to kind of make sure that, that everything was followed and, and we followed everything that they were requesting. So thank you. Yep. Okay. Uh, Rita, any questions? Uh, yeah, just have a question on hopefully when the pandemic <laughs> leaves us and you have your congregation uh, at a more full capacity, there wouldn't be any street parking allowed. Is that right, Charles? You're, you're definitely correct. Uh, there would be no street parking. Okay. Only so every, yeah. Parking. Okay. All right. And then what kind of a sign are you planning on? Or are you planning on sign? Uh, so we really, we're trying to do something pretty traditional. Again, we have the historic district too, if this gets approved, but we noticed yeah. that a lot of the restaurants like the Charles, we really like that type of a look where it's kind mm -hmm. of this, like, it almost looks like a home for sale sign, but a, you know, a lot nicer and has a lot more character. Yeah. So something really simple <laughs> like that. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. Great. Be nice to have that building used. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Well, all right. Elizabeth. Questions. Oh, thank you, Rita. Elizabeth, did you have any questions? I don't have any questions, thank you. Okay, and Dan. Yes, I have a couple questions. More on the um, capacity issue. How many services were you planning on having on Sunday? Um, you that out yet? Really depends on uh, quantity of registration. So um, I'm anticipating to start with two, uh, and then we could increase it to three. Uh, it's really, it really depends on registration. The soft, the church software that we have right now can cap registration. So if somebody goes to register on our website and say we cap it at maybe 20 people, 25 people, whatever we decide, um, then they won't be able to register for that worship experience and they'd have to kind of go to the next one. And thank you. And uh, my last question, is that building currently handicap accessible? 
So there, there is a handicap ramp in the back that leads to the inside of the building. Okay. And how about inside? Are the bathrooms handicap accessible? And they, yeah. they are. Um, yeah, they have the railings on each side of the toilet seats and okay. stuff. It seems that the previous applicant did a lot, like there's a sprinkler system and fire extinguishers and handicap accessibility and yeah. things like that. We just noticed as we were as we were in there. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any uh, follow ups from any of the commissioners? No. OK, um, I was just curious if you uh, if we go back to uh, what seems like eons ago now, but uh, early part of the year when you were having the services at Webb, how many what, what was a typical Sunday like in terms of number of attendees? Yeah, so we we launched um, with about 200 people in attendance and that was kind of inflated. We had a lot of friends and family that came to support us and check us out. Um, and then the following two weeks, it was about between 75 and 100 people. And then, and then we were shut down. We don't really know. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then things changed. We, we, okay. We try to engage it online, and but you know you don't know exactly okay. how, what those numbers look like. All uh, right. Is there anything else you guys would like to add to what you already presented? No. We uh, we just appreciate your time and are excited to uh, to be here. All right. Thank you. And uh, at this time. Charles, we will open it up if we have any callers or attendees on the line who wish to speak either in support of or in opposition to this application. Okay, so um, we have um, we have one uh, adjoining property owner that is present. Um, he indicated to me that he did not wish to, to speak. He just wanted to... Um, listening and on the um on the application uh and he's present with us here tonight um so okay so, so does not wish to speak either either way right he indicated okay. to me that he, he did not wish to speak he just wanted to um to listen in uh, on the application Okay, and if I could ask a related question back to the Timbros, uh, have you had any discussions with any of the neighbors in the surrounding area? Uh, no, we haven't. Um, uh, individually, uh, we did send out the letter uh, that Charles gave us to the, uh, I think it was 33 um, people. Um, I also am very close with uh, Pastor Derek of First Church. Um, where we were close with him. I'm a uh, part of a uh, prayer group with him. So we've had conversations about it. I know they're kind of right next to us, uh, but we've had conversations too about this. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll give one last uh, call just because I can't see everybody on screen. If uh, we have anybody again who wishes to speak as part of this application and no one has spoken up. All right, thank you very much. Um, Elizabeth, if we could read the next application in, please. We're at number three, application 63820, variance from section 3.7, dimensional requirements, to allow side yard setback of 11 feet as against 12 feet required, an aggregate side yard of 24 feet as against 27 feet required. Variance sought for the installation of a heat pump at the eastern side of building residential zone A1. Location, 51 Meadowgate Street. Applicant, Mark Lemaire. I hope I got that right. All right, thank you. Charles, is there a staff report for this one? Yes, so, so the applicant inquired about the um, setback requirements for the installation of a generator in the side yard. Um, the applicant was advised of the minimum and um, of the minimum side yard and the aggregate side yard requirement for this A1 zone in which the property is located. And as such, the application was submitted seeking the above mentioned variance. Uh, there is no prior variance on record for this property. So the building has um, side yard setbacks as follows. Three, 13 feet to the west and 15 feet to the east. Uh, this is in conformance with the uh, setback for both the minimum side yard which is 11 feet. So the, the minimum side yard required is 11 feet and um, 
he currently has 13 and 15. Uh, the aggregate side uh, um, is uh, 27 feet. And um, uh, the generator when installed at the side of the building will leave only 11 feet as against 12 feet required. And added to the existing 13 feet, we realize an aggregate of 24 feet as against um, 27 feet required. Uh, so the applicant, uh, as you know, this application before you today, and um, staff has assessed the application and has no concerns regarding the granting of this variance. Okay, thank you, Charles. Um, and again, I'll ask uh, for uh, please to correct us if we're off on the pronunciation. Is it Mr. Lemaire? Yes, it's perfect. All right, perfect. Uh, would you like to walk us through the application, please? Yeah, very similar to what Charles said. I just want to put in a heat pump. I know the paperwork says heat pump or generator, but it's a heat pump. It's a heating and cooling unit. It's like a central air unit. Um, it's a small, efficient unit just going on the side yard there, kind of directly across or fairly directly across from where my neighbor's unit, uh, where she has hers in her yard. Um, it's just a best place to put it. I, I realize it's one foot variance from the side yard requirements, uh, but the, putting it the only other spot would be in the back of the house, but that's where the patio is and it would be less ideal. It's just, it seems like it's the right place to put it. It's where all the power is or into the house. Um, so uh, that's about it. That's where I'd like to, for it to go, but I think it's, you know, it's only off by a foot. Okay, and it would be, so the, the unit itself looks like it's uh, three feet, but you have to allow a, a one foot gap between the house and the unit. Is that what I'm seeing on the? Diagram? Yeah, we, we, we okay. rounded up to three feet. The unit is actually 30 inches. Oh, okay. Um, it, needs to be, it needs to be one foot away from the house. So it'll, um, it's really, the variance is really for six inches, but uh, I just rounded it up to a foot. Okay, and uh, you mentioned your neighbor, um, mm -hmm that is directly on the side there. So is there any barrier between the two yards? No, the, there's a slight different uh, in height. Maybe her, her yard is maybe two or three high, feet higher. There's a small retaining wall right there. Okay, um, and you mentioned she has a, um, is it a central air unit? She does, yeah. There, okay. And have you spoken with her about the plan? I have, I have. She has no issues with it. Um, in fact, hers is much closer to the property line than what mine would be. Okay. Uh, what about visibility from the street? Uh, is there anything, is it any visual uh, barrier between this and this from Meadowgate? Well, it's, it's there on the side of my yard. I mean, certainly I have a lot of shrubs and stuff there that would be blocking it for the most part. Um, I mean, I think you'd really almost have to walk onto my property to see it, or you could get it from, okay. see it from an angle. I've had the sign out there. A few neighbors have been curious as to what I was doing, but nobody voiced any concern for me. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna run through the list again just to see if we have questions. I'll start with uh, Rita. Any questions for the applicant? Our, my question actually is probably more curiosity. Is a, is a heat pump any noisier than a central air conditioner? No, I, I believe it's uh, supposed to be even quieter because it's a newer unit. I mean, really, I plan to use it. Um, it's a heating and cooling unit. I, right. I primarily plan to use it for, uh, for cooling in the summer, um, but apparently it can provide some very efficient electric heat um, in the winter, but only down to, say, 30 or 40 degrees. If it's really cold, it's not going to do the job. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Paul, any questions? No questions from me. All right, thank you. Uh, we'll go to Jim next. Any questions for the applicant? No, all set. All right, and how about Sandy? All set. And Dan? All set, thank you. All right, and Elizabeth, any questions? Okay. Um, all right, Mr. Lemaire, anything else that uh, you want to add? Uh, no, that's it. I appreciate your time. Okay, thank you. Uh, and Charles, at this point, I will open it up if we have anybody who wishes to speak on this application. 
either for or against. Are you aware that we have anybody, Charles, for this no, one? No, we don't. We don't, Mr. Chairman. We don't have anyone. Um, okay. Expressing any view either way. All right, and you haven't heard anything um, directly. No comments from neighbors or anything, Charles. No, I haven't. Okay. All right, uh, Elizabeth. Why don't we go to number four? Number four, application number sixty-two thirty-nine twenty. Variance from section 3.7 dimensional requirements to allow aggregate side yard of 13.8 feet as against 15 feet required. Variance sought to install a standby generator at the eastern side of the building. Residential zone B, location 21 Robinswood Drive. Application applicant, Mark Trahan. All right, thank you. And Charles, is there a staff report here? Yes, Mr. Chairman. So an application was submitted to the building department for the installation of this generator at the eastern side of the building. The zoning review revealed that based on the proposed location of the generator, the setback at the eastern side will only be eight feet and um, added to the existing 5.8 feet on the western side, the aggregate side yard will only be 13.8 feet as against 15 feet required. So this, zone, this is a B zone, which requires a minimum side yard setback of five feet and then aggregate uh, 15 feet. So uh, the applicant will now be down to 13.8 feet as against 15 feet. And that is um, with uh, both side yards taken into account, 5.8 and, um, and eight feet. Uh, so although, yes, so although, like I said, the minimum side yard will be met, but, um, the aggregate side there uh, is what the variance will um, be necessary for. Uh, there's no prior variance on record for this property. Um, so the applicant was advised that he needed to get this variance and the applicant is now before you. I have no concerns regarding the granting of this variance. I have not had a feedback from any um, adjoining property owner, whether for this um, variance or against it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Trahan, if you would like to walk us through the application. Yeah, as the others have said, Charles did a great job. Um, we have on that side of the house, um, uh, a, and just for the record, my wife would prefer to see this on the other side of the house. Um, but if, if you take a look at what we've submitted to you, we built an addition on the other side of our home that is complete slab. Um, and there's no way for us to, even if we wanted to, to trench, we'd have to go underneath the driveway. We have a koi pond in the backyard. We'd have to go under a koi pond in the backyard to get it. Um, and, and candidly, the spot that we have on the home, we do have a AC uh, unit um, on one side of the chimney. Hopefully you guys have gotten images from us uh, on what we supplied. And so on one side of the chimney is the AC unit. The other side of the chimney is the proposed area that we would like to be able to put the emergency generator. Um, and also, as you'll see, based on what we shared, we plan on dressing up that side of the house um, uh, with, if you, there's a picture of an actual walkway in the front of our house that will be carrying along the side of that. And there'll be plantings in front of that generator uh, to be mindful uh, of my neighbor. Uh, my neighbor and I are like brothers. Um, uh, and he actually is going to be looking at a generator as well. I think everybody in Weathersfield is looking at generators, it seems, but um, I'm sure we'll never use it now that we're all putting them in. Um, but uh, it's a perfect spot for us in the sense of um, the uh, gas and the electric is right there on that corner of the home. Uh, and from the street, um, once, um, uh, even without any um, um, plantings around it, you'd have a very hard time actually seeing it from the street, but we are gonna be planting ornamental grass or something in front of it, so it, it'll be hidden. Okay, yeah, thank you for the additional uh, visuals. I'm looking at the picture where you have the, um, the blue um, crate to represent where the generator is gonna go. Yes, How much? That's not the same, just to be fair, that's not this, the generator is bigger than that. That's just to give you an idea on where it's gonna be situated. The generator. Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah, and actually that was going to be my question. So how, how much further roughly beyond where the central air unit 
um, extends. We'll it's just go. Almost a, it's a, almost a photo finish. Um, it's about, it's within an inch sticking out of where the AC unit is right now. Um, uh, the amount of space, so it's literally would sit about six inches outside of the front of the chimney is what the AC unit is. And this unit would be about the same. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go uh, around the horn again. I'll start with Elizabeth on this one. Any questions for the applicant? No questions, thank you. Okay, uh, Dan. No questions, thank you. Sandy, any questions? No questions, thank you. All right, how about Jim? Just one, so as we look at this photo here, is that, is that street facing? So you're on the street and you'll be able to see the unit? Um, it, let me look at the picture. Yep, um, what you're looking at there, I assume it's, we're looking at the same picture. I'm having a hard time looking at yours. Um, I'm sure, I'm looking at the one with the chimney where you've got the tape measure showing. Yes. Yeah, so I'm just trying to orient myself. Would, would you be, would this be visible from the street or visible from your backyard? It would be visible from our backyard. And if you look okay. deeper in that picture, you can actually see the AC generator, just a little bit of it sticking out. I don't know if you can that. It's underneath the, there's a little, the lowest purple flower there, underneath there, the generator. Um, it's fairly camouflaged, but you can see that it sticks out about six, seven inches from the chimney now. Yeah. Okay, but primarily what we're looking at is a visual, as if That's you were standing backyard. in your backyard. Okay, great, thank, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Yep. All right, Paul, any questions? No questions for me, thank you. Thank you, and Rita? No, no questions. Okay, Mr. Train, anything else you wanna add? No, nope. thank you for your service. I know they don't pay you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, okay, Charles, do we have anybody who wishes to spy, uh, speak? Either for or against this application? No, we we have no uh, no one who expressed any, any concerns or any, wanted to speak um, for or against this application. Okay, and and Mr. Train, just to go back, one more question. You mentioned um, so the the view that we have, where I'll go back to the picture with the the blue crate to represent. That's the view directly from your neighbor's side yard, correct? That would be correct. Um, you'll see, I think there's about 25 feet uh, or 26 feet between our houses from wall to wall. Um, that's taken from my side of the yard. And yes, that is correct. That would be my neighbor's view. And as I mentioned, um, we're gonna be planting it all in front of that, that particular area. Okay, and that was the neighbor you referenced earlier that uh, you've already spoken with and? Yes, he's actually okay. the planning on putting a generator, I think on their side. <laughs> of, of okay. Those. All right. Well, thank you very much, uh, Elizabeth. I think we are ready for application number five. All right, number five, application number 624020, variance from section 6.3 I3A sign regulations to allow wall sign of 232.07 square feet as against 125 square foot maximum permitted. Regional Commercial RC Zone, location 1380 to 1430 Berlin Turnpike, shop 1420, applicant Cedar Jordan Lane, LLC. All right, thank you. And uh, Charles, the staff report on this one, please. Yes, yeah, so um, the applicant did her, her groundwork, to, so to speak, on this application before contacting the department. So when she contacted the department, she uh, pretty much had all her ducks in a row, um, and, uh, uh, and a request was submitted um, for a sign larger than permitted on the um, that facade of the building, um, known known as fourteen twenty Berlin Turnpike. So this this shop is located in the assessor's um, parcel known as thirteen eighty to 1430 Berlin Turnpike. And it is situated at the corner of um, Jordan Lane and Berlin Turnpike. Uh, so um, this particular store 
house the farm, the former uh, Fallas department store. And um, it's evidenced by the sign that's still present on the facade of the building. Uh, so the applicant has applied for a variance to allow the new signage for the prospective Shoppers World department store. And staff has reviewed the proposed request for the variance from section 6.3 I3A of the zoning uh, regulations of weather field pertaining to the sign requirements and has determined the following. So uh, the regulations currently uh, allows uh, two square foot of wall signage for each linear foot of um, frontage. Uh, the applicant is requesting 232.07 square foot of signage on the frontage of the subject store. Um, so um, at, if we take that calculation of two square foot per linear foot, uh, we would realize that the, 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 the linear foot measurement of the of the shop as it exists is 234 feet. Hence, um, the applicant would be allowed uh, 468 square feet of signage. However, the regulation has a stipulation there that says um, the maximum allowable, allowable signage is um, 125 square feet for um, one sign or any number of signs on that um, particular facade. So based on that analysis, the applicant is requesting a variance for an additional uh, 107 square feet uh, for the sign area to be 232.07 square feet. And um, so we arrived at that by minus 125 square feet from uh, the allowable, um, the allowable that what what should be allowed, and so um, we arrive at a square footage of two hundred and thirty-two square feet for the sign. Um, staff reviewed the application and has no concerns regarding the granting of this variance. Okay, thank you, Charles. And, and who do we have speaking on behalf of this application? And if you would um, just give your name and address for the record, since it's not directly on what we have in the agenda. I think the speaker's on mute. Ah, okay. So I believe it was, was it Lori? Can you unmute yourself, please, Lori? There we go. Can you hear me? Yes, there we are. <laughs> I, don't, right. I don't know how I got muted. <laughs> Hi, Lori Davenport from Yush Sign and Display uh, at 42 Thomas Street, East Hartford, Connecticut. Thank you. What would you like to tell us about the application? Okay, well, basically, Shoppers World um, you know, is a fairly large department store. Um, that will be moving into the 1420 uh, location. Uh, as you can see, it's a very, very large storefront, uh, 234 linear feet. The sign facade um, is 80 feet by 24 feet. And we feel a 125 square foot sign is going to look very lost um, in that location. Um, that particular store is only visible by westbound traffic. Uh, as you're coming down Berlin Turnpike eastbound, you would not see that storefront until you entered the plaza. Uh, that store is off to the right. There is over 418 feet of setback from the time that you enter that drive entrance to that store frontage. So that by having a 125 square foot sign is really disabling that particular store of getting a lot of uh, good visibility. Um, we just feel like uh, that is a disadvantage for them. And uh, considering sh uh, stop and shop, uh, they have a fairly large sign, which is definitely over the allowance. Stop and shop has a total of 
283.6 square feet of signage. Um, and I would kind of compare Stop and Shop and Shoppers World is probably as almost, almost an equal draw to that particular plaza. So it would be really, really nice, I think, for that plaza to get that, you know, added advertisement and getting people in there. So um, if we could uh, see to getting a larger sign there, that I think that would really work. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, I'll run through again. Um, a quick, quick question: When, when is Shoppers World plan to be operational in that location? They're, they're trying to shoot for February. Okay. All right. I'll uh, go down they, the list they again. They wanted to open earlier, but the sure. COVID kind of you know slowed everything down for them. Okay. Uh, I'll start this time with Dan. Any questions for the applicant? Dan, you may be muted. Nope, no questions, thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, Elizabeth. I kind of alluded to one of my questions, it's more for Charles. Do any of the other, I mean, I'm trying to envision this area. Do any of the other signs in that, or stores in that property have, or that area have a variance? Because it seems like there's some large ones around there, if I'm yes. not. Um, like the applicant says, uh, Stop and Shop seem to have a um, much larger uh, sign than um, than would be um, permitted today. However, it seems to me that um, I did not find a variance in the in the records that show that Stop and Shop actually got a variance for for a larger sign. What I saw and. Um, during my time, I remember that Stop and Shop had come in to replace some existing signs. And we, and um, they went to the design review and they were granted the building permit and so on. But um, it's, it's either that, um, I don't think a variance was granted. At that time, these signs would probably have been allowed in the, on the, in the front of the building. Thank you, that's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Rita, any questions? Um, no, it's it's a lit sign, is that right? So I guess I do have a question. It's a yes. sign would be lit 24 hours a day? Just Shoppers, like Shoppers World will be lit at nighttime, yes. The, um, the uh, tagline will not be lit. Okay. N not flashing, though. No, no. No, LED, okay. LED channel letters, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, thank you, Rita. Uh, Paul, any questions? No questions for me, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Jim, any questions? I have two. Um, do you know, do the, um, so this application is being submitted by the tenants. Do you know, does the plaza owner have a view on this? They approved it um, within the package I submitted was their, their signed approval. Okay. Yes, we had to get the, uh, the applicant um, the old property owner signature and all applicants. I just okay. like to point out. I just like to point out for the record at this time that um, a variance was granted. Um, when was this? In, in June of two thousand and five, for um, a store that's presently existing, um, and that's the Eblin store, over on that same end of the building. And I think the Eblins is the last store um, towards Berlin Turnpike. They, they, they were granted a variance to have their sign um, larger than that, which was allowed. I was just curious. The second question I have is, um, I don't know if the tenants are hard over on, is it the size that's the issue or is it the shape? It would be, um, it's the only one that would have a peak. The others are sort of flat and it's just inconsistent with the other shapes is it size or shape yeah. that they're more yeah it, it's it's both i mean it, it's a huge storefront it's almost as large as stop and shop storefront and all the other stores are much much smaller and there is a huge peak area that seemed to have been designed specifically to place a sign and um yeah it's it's uh, such a large area that the 125 square foot sign would look lost in there only take up about six, six and a half percent of that, that area. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. 
All right. And Sandy, did you have any questions? No questions. Thank you. Okay. Um, is there anything else from the applicant perspective that you wanted to share? Um, no, I, I believe I covered it all. Um, Charles did mention about some of the other stores. They were just able to utilize their spaces really well and, and have some nice impact with their signage. And it, uh, I believe Shoppers World, um, you know, it'd be nice if they could utilize their space properly. All right, thank you. Uh, Charles, this time we'll open it up. If, do we have anybody who wishes to speak either in favor or in opposition to this application? No, Mr. Chairman, we, we have no one that wants to speak um, in favor or against this application. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna do one last sweep. Uh, I'll give it a second here. If we have any commissioners who have any remaining questions for any of the applicants. Sorry, okay. one more. One more. Sure. Just to be clear, what we would be ruling on is the size of the lettering, right? The size of the overall sign. Yeah. So the. Um, yeah, so, so, yeah. So there's Shoppers World, and then there's a tagline below Shoppers World. Got it. But the 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 structure is already existing. It's the lettering within right. the structure. Okay, I understand now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. No, good clarification. Any other uh, questions? All right. And Charles, just to reconfirm, we have nobody remaining who wishes to make any comment on any of the, any of the applications? We, we have no one that um, wishes to comment, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, at this point, then, if we could have a motion to close the public hearing. I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. And can we have a second? second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Aye. Aye. All right. With that, we have closed the public hearing. We will move into our public meeting. And again, just as a reminder, this is where the commissioners discuss the applications and we will bring each one to a vote. Uh, there's no additional testimony that we hear during this phase of the agenda. Uh, so we'll open it up. Elizabeth, if you would read the first application. Sure. Application 6236-20, variance from section 4.1C, agricultural zone dimensional requirements, to allow side yard setback of 20 feet as against 25 feet minimum required. Variance requested for the installation of a gener generator at southern side of the building, residential zone AEG. Location, 144 Elm Street, applicant Nancy Eno. All right, and just as a reminder, as much to myself as uh, to everybody else, we can have uh, open discussion on the application um, either before or after we bring a motion. So with that, we will open it up. Do we have any opening comments anybody wishes to make on this application? And if, if not, do we have anybody who wishes to bring a motion for this application? I'll make a motion for approval. Can I just ask a question first as far as voting? Please. Um, are we all voting, what, Dave? Yeah, great question. So we have uh, we have seven of us present. That should be, Charles, am I correct? That's five, we have five permanent members out of that seven? We have... Um, a great question, well, Rita, thank you for doing that. We actually, we actually have five full members and um, we have a full house actually. We have five full members and two alternates. Okay, so for all of the applications tonight, then the, uh, the five full members will be voting, uh, but all members are open and encouraged for discussion and question as we go through the applications. So Rita, thank you for bringing that up. Okay. All right, so uh, could I ask for just a repeat on the motion? I would make a motion for approval. Second. Okay. So we have a motion to approve the application as submitted. Uh, we'll bring it to a vote. So the five uh, permanent members, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And all opposed? 
Okay. And um, if um, I'll ask for our uh, recorder, if you need us to verify anything, um, please feel free to speak up. But uh, by my indications, we had a five to nothing vote in favor of approving the variance. And with that, we can read in the second application. Number two, application number 623720, variance from section 5.2 B2, permitted principal uses to allow a religious institution in the agricultural zone, agricultural zone AG. Location 105 Marsh Street, applicant Kevin Timbro. All right, thank you. Um, we obviously had a little bit to go through with this one given the uh, previous history with the property. Um, I will say though, with uh, all that withstanding, having been vacant, uh, this seems like a good use of the property from my perspective and uh, fits generally with the area with, uh, we heard mention of um, First Church being essentially a neighbor um, to this one. So uh, I think from my perspective, our decision is really how much or how many of the previous stipulations we may want to work in as part of a motion. But um, that's uh, my perspective, just to start discussion. I'll ask for any other feedback or points of view. That makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. I would concur with. That. Okay, uh, Dan. Looks like you had a hand up. I think I might have yeah, missed you. I believe there was a site visit done on the property last time. Is am I using the correct terminology? To, you know, that's a question for you, Charles. Yes, yes, yes. It, it's been four years. Should another site visit be done on the property to make sure that it's up to code? Well. Um, I did uh, visit the property and um, my findings are as follows. Um, number one, the, the curbing um, along the edges of the driveway um, were not in place, so that needs- Oh, okay, to... those are yours, okay. You don't need to repeat them, Charles. Okay, I'm with you now. Yes. Okay, thank you. I thought that was from 2016. That's my so bad. These, these are from 2016. Yeah. Oh, so so um, these seven, uh, these 10 um, points are from um, 2017. It was actually copied from the, from, um, the Planning and Zoning Commission and the um, ZEO's site inspection. But I just like to reiterate that I did go there and I noticed that, um, and I'll go through them one by one. The first one was that the edges of the driveways, and like we said, the, 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 the variance was not, was not carried through. So um, it was, these things were not done for the most part. And um, the, the curbing was still missing. Um, so that's number one. Um, the, there was no signage um, at the at the entrance of the. Um, there was no signage that that says um, one way in, um, at, whether whether on the pavement or any sign to say that no entry one way in. So that would that I suppose you would want that to be to be done, Mr. Chairman. Um, so uh, the 20 parking spaces are there, uh, they are marked, but I, you know, over time um, they have faded somewhat. Um, so that's that. Uh, the handicap, um, the handicap room is in space, is in place, I, I, I'm sorry. And um, the, the handicap space, uh, it seems to me that they had um, they had widened the the handicap space to eleven point five foot, 
and the nine and the hatched area for, for the accessory was nine foot from my uh, measurement. So I take it that this would be pretty much um, ADA compliant. Uh, the light posts are in place. Um, and um, the suggestion was that uh, the applicants would determine whether they needed to, um, to, to put new lighting in um, and that they would be required to comply with the zoning regulations for lighting requirements and all lights must be cut off. There's no street address. So that's that. Um, there's a tree to the rear that's down. I don't know if that's the same tree that um, staff referred to. A tree that's down. It's not. It's by no. And this tree that I saw down. It could be from a recent storm. It's by no way blocking the the um, the parking spaces as suggested um, from the prior uh, inspection. Um, the scrub and brush along the white fence that had been cleared, but uh, and. It's plain to see that the property has not been used, so it definitely will need some kind of a um, TLC. And um, I have no doubt that these new these new applicants will go in and make sure that it's you know it's up to up to to um, property maintenance standards. So um, so yeah, that that's it. They pretty much did most of what was to be done. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, did we have other questions or comments from any of the commissioners? All right. Um, uh, with that, then I'm going to take a stab at a motion um, with the goal of maintaining some consistency from previous discussions on the property. So. Uh, I would like to move that the application be approved with the following stipulations. Number one, that any missing curbing along the edges of driveway should be repaired or replaced. Number two, that the driveway along the western edge be used only as an interest, entrance and marked as such with signage and pavement markings. Number three, any remaining broken edges of pavement in the drive aisles and parking spaces should be repaired. Number four, any plans for seating beyond 84 would require additional parking and a new site plan approval. Number five, all required and provided handicapped Parking spaces must be compliant with ADA required dimensions. Number six, any lighting that is installed or required as determined by the applicant must comply with current zoning regulation lighting requirements and all lights must be full cut off. Number seven, street address will be placed on the front of the building for emergency response purposes. Number eight, the applicant will need to ensure that the building is compliant with required building codes to be used as a place of assembly, including complete ADA accessibility and various other life safety codes. Number nine, any fallen trees on the property should be removed, including any debris that blocks any portions of any parking spaces. Number 10, scrub and brush along the fence should be maintained and cleared per town property maintenance code. 
Number 11, installation of a one-way do not enter sign on either side of the driveway at the intersection with the parking lot. Number 12, property owner must continually maintain existing shrubbery in the front yard to maximize sight line distances for vehicles traveling eastbound on Marsh Street. And number 13 should be noted by the applicant that any exterior work to be done on the property may require a certificate of appropriateness from the Historic District Commission. And thus ends my motion. I will second that motion. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> I, I took a few notes. Um, all right, so we have a, a motion to approve with the stipulations as read into the record. We have a second, so we will now take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 And all opposed? All right, and again, I'll ask if our uh, recorder needs any clarification, but uh, we seem to have an approval as stipulated uh, by a vote of five to zero. And with that, I believe we are ready for application number three. Number three, application number 623820, variance from section 3.7 dimensional requirements to allow side yard setback of 11 feet as against 12 feet required an aggregate side yard of 24 feet as against 27 feet required. Variant sought for the installation of a heat pump at the eastern side of the building. Residential zone A1, location 51 Meadowgate Street, applicant Mark Lemaire. All right, any opening uh, comments or discussion? Um, I will say that uh, this is seemingly one of the more straightforward applications we get. Um, nothing uh, out of the ordinary from my perspective and, and nothing that leads me to think uh, there's any um, any downside to uh, approval. Any other comments or questions from any of the commissioners? All right, may I re request a motion then on this application? And make, make a motion, motion to approve the application as submitted. I'll second Dan's motion. Okay. All right. So we have a motion to approve as submitted. We have a second. And we'll have our five commissioners now vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Again, we appear to have a vote of five to zero in favor of approving the application for variance. Elizabeth, can we go to number four? Number four, application number 63920, variance from section 3.7 dimensional requirements to allow aggregate side yard of 13.8 feet as against 15 feet required. Variance sought to install a standby generator at the eastern side of the building, residential zone B. Location 21 Robinswood Drive. Applicant Mark Trahan. Comments, questions? Motion? Motion to approve as uh, submitted. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. second. Uh, who, who was in there first? <laughs> All right, we'll go with Dan on that one. All right, so we have a motion to approve as submitted. We have a second. We will now go to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right, not hearing any opposition, I believe that gives us another five nothing vote in favor of approving the application and takes us to number five. Number five, application number 624020, variance from section 6.3 I3A sign regulations to allow wall sign of 20, 232.07 square feet as against 125 square feet maximum permitted. 
Regional Commercial RC Zone. Location 1380 to 1430 Berlin to Turnpike, shop number 1420. Applicant Cedar Jordan Lane, LLC. All right, this, um, so I, I've been at this for a few years and um, we had a flurry of these types of applications several years ago and then we've had uh, not too many of them. We've uh, had more, I would say, uh, condenser units and generators of late, but um, we have, um, well, I, I shouldn't say we, I, my uh, philosophy on this has typically been where we can and where it makes sense. We try to be as um, business friendly as possible. And this is a, a plaza, you know, as we heard, it's, um, if you haven't been in there, this, you know, it's offset from the road, it's only visible from travel in one direction. And um, as we had the, the good clarification during the discussion, the, the front and that structure we saw with the peak, that is there today. Um, so it's just the matter of how much signage we are willing to allow. And, um, you know, I have to say, having been part of some of the discussions with uh, golf brook shops and with the Buffalo wild wings and some other locations, I, I think, and even with some other signage in that same plaza, um, this seems uh, certainly quite reasonable to me. So um, I'll offer that perspective and ask for any other comment or question. I, I would concur with that. Um, I think that it's, seems appropriate given the size of the store itself and given the fact that there are other stores in that plaza that have comparably sized signs. So um, I think it's consistent with, with what's existing. All right, do we have any other questions? Um, just general questions, anything for Charles or any other comment on this application? Going once, all right. And uh, if there are no additional comments, do we have a motion on this one? I'll make a motion, make a motion to approve the application as submitted. I'll all right, thank you, Dan. Motion. All right, so motion from Dan, second from Elizabeth. With that, we will go to vote uh, to approve as submitted. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right, uh, we appear to have a five to zero vote in favor of approving the application as submitted. And with that, um, I'm gonna say I'm rusty on this part. So I'm going to perhaps uh, go overly procedural. Can we just have a motion to close our public meeting before we move into other parts of the agenda? Do we need to do I think we need to do minutes, right? Do, does the meeting still need to be open for the? Oh, is that okay? All right, yeah. That, thank you. I'm see these two months off have uh, have kept me. Uh, uh, I haven't practiced, so uh, I, you are correct. I think that is still considered part of me. All right, so we have approval of minutes from July, um, and I do not have those in front of me at the moment. Do we have enough of us who are here for the July meeting? It appears the only two absent were Michael Vieira and Paul. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did we have any? There's um, some of us. Let's see. I have David, Daniel, me, Sandra, and Rita. We're all there. That gives us certainly enough. Um, did anybody have any questions or any requests for edits to the July minutes? They looked okay uh, to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, anyone who was present at the July meeting wish to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as submitted. Second. Okay, uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor of approving the July minutes? Aye. 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 
All opposed. All right, our minutes have passed. And let's see, that takes us, uh, we have opportunity now for any comment on other matters pertaining to the Zoning Board of Appeals? Charles, do we have anybody else on the line who uh, wishes to make any comment? No, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so that takes us to, uh, if I'm remembering the agenda correctly. Could I ask takes... a quick, could I ask a quick yeah, question? Yeah, please, please. Charles, and I don't want to make this any longer, but is there something coming up on changing zoning for fences? Yes. Um... <clears throat> Actually, uh, just so that we can read it, we, I know it's late and we don't want to um, talk we, a lot. We, we, we had suggested um, some minor changes to the regulations and um, it went to the Planning and Zoning Commission and um, twice, um, the last time being um, the 17th of um, November. And um, <clears throat> the conclusion is that it's pretty much accepted. We just have to make uh, just a few minor changes and then we will have a, an amended um, fence regulation. And they vote on that? Planning and zoning votes to accept or not? Planning and zoning did pretty much accept, accept it. Like I say, we have not taken the final draft to them yet, but based on what they saw the last time, um, they thought we were pretty much on stream. I know you had some concerns. No, I just wondered who who makes these changes since it's been, you know, it's been kind of a problem for us. Who? Okay, so so that's the, all. The, the changes has been made, um, have been made by myself and um, Peter Gillespie. Peter Gillespie, myself, and the town engineer meet and we discuss it. And we first, I came up with. I was trying to do a radical change, and I came up with a lot of different things and. It was thought that um, it was too long on journal. We should keep it simple. So we just made it, made a couple of minor changes and um, we went back to the com to the Planning and Zoning Commission and they, they thought that we were on, on, on the right um, stream to, to having um, that okay. modified. So we just have to do a little tweaking and then get back to them. So it's, it's pretty much on stream. And that actually is a really interesting question. So when, uh, assuming this goes through and that would lead to a change in zoning regulations, um, how do we get notified of those things? Um, so if there's a change to the actual zoning regulations, is there any notification that comes to us from planning and zoning? Well, um, I don't or would it just know. come up next time we have an application for a fence. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it, if the, Planning and Zoning Commission will make uh, um, will send something directly to the Board of Appeals to say that we we have changed the regulations, but it will be published. It will be on the website. It will be circulated that there's a change. Okay. So everyone will be aware that there's a change in the regulations. Okay. I All right. That that has been a kind of a thing in the past, whether what the regulations are and who knows about them. So, okay. Yeah, but you will, I, I will make sure that you are aware of the changes that are made. Cause I know that the fence was a, um, it was a critical issue, um, you know, yeah. in, in recent times we had some controversial um, fence uh, construction going on. So we will make sure that we are, um, we all see this. We're going to uh, 12 feet high now on security fencing that's allowed. Is that, uh, no, okay. All right, that, 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 excellent question. Any other, and, and my apologies, I should have opened it up to the commissioners. Any other questions from the commissioners on matters related to the ZBA? All right, uh, well, with that, if um, we could take a few more minutes. Uh, we've had this on the agenda for most of 2020, I believe. Um, we do need to, at some point, formalize officers. And uh, historically, during my tenure, we have had a chair, a vice chair, and a clerk uh, that have been formalized positions. 
Uh, I know, Charles, you said the clerk may not be required, but uh, I know historically we have had that. Um, so. Yes, yes, you could have, I think you could have a chair, a vice chair and a clerk, of course, certainly. certainly. Okay. And, um, um, and um, another thing too, would you, would you want to have a set time frame, like to say, such as every year, you would have a vote to change the, um, you know, not necessarily change, but to re-elect um, officers. Yeah, and that um, that's not anywhere in any kind of bylaws or anything that we have, right? Like, there's there's nothing. There's no precedent set for that. No, or, I've not seen. Okay. I've not seen any kind of bylaws that says um, after a year you. Yeah. So, I mean, we, we, you may want to establish some something like that. I don't know. Okay. Um. Yeah. So I guess um, I, I will admit this. I'm a not exactly sure uh, how to get accomplished what we're doing. So I'm gonna assume that we should first make a motion around uh, how often we would like to regroup and formalize officers. Um, once, a year so, would be, once a year sounds like a reasonable time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll make a motion that uh, we- January or something like that. Yeah, um, I was actually, so I, I'm going to move that we, um, going forward, so beginning in 2021, that we formalize officers at the December meeting for the upcoming year. So we'll do it tonight, and that'll take us through to our December 2021 meeting, at which point then we would finalize again for 2022. Um, um, I, yeah, but, um, I'm thinking that let's suppose we don't have a meeting in December to say the December meeting would be kind of vague, you know what I'm saying? If we could, I was trying to be more specific because I was yeah, just, I just mean, to say we're going to do it once a year seemed too vague to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> but what if we like, said that we, we appointed have a meeting the... for four months or, you know. So to say the December meeting, you may not have a meeting, you know, um, but the closest yeah. meeting. Okay, the meeting. so I, 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 will, uh, I will amend my motion to uh, move that once a year before the end of the calendar year, we formalize officers for the upcoming year. Yes, that sounds like a good way to put it. Would it make more sense to do it in July when there's new members coming on, members might be coming off? The terms normally expire June 30th. Fair point. Because um, you might be doing it in December and then also we have someone coming off and we're back to without a chair. Yeah, and I've been on this so long I've forgotten that. Is that when most terms are up? Is in, Yes, in, I think it's... Um, it's okay. uh, June, June 30th is the end of the term for the members. Okay, so I'm going to make a second. I'm going to withdraw my previous <laughs> motion and make a second amendment. Um, I will amend the motion to move that uh, once a year, as soon as possible, after, after June, 30th. June 30th, we formalize officers for the upcoming year. I'll second that. All right. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. So it is so moved that uh, once a year, as soon as possible after June 30th, we will formalize officers for the upcoming year. Uh, with that, I honestly don't know. I've never, I, my tenure up until the last couple of years, we uh, um, had so many people who had been on the board for so long that we never, <laughs> we, we had the same chair for probably my first, I don't even know how long I've been doing this now, but probably the first nine years, I think we had the same chair. So um, do we need to nominate 
folks for the three positions and um, second those nominations. Uh, do we want Charles, to just start? Yeah. Do we want to start and just do chair, vice chair, and then clerk? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Charles, do you have any opinion on whether we need to make nominations for each one? You want to do that tonight? I, I was, if, if people yeah. don't mind sticking around for a couple minutes, I think we could get this knocked out because we've been. No, the reason why I asked, I thought you said that, I thought we were saying that closest to after June 30th. I mean. Well, yeah, but this is, but the, we don't this have, is now the we closest don't have anybody. to. This okay. is now the closest this to last year, 2020. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and, and we, yeah, this might be a good time to do it. We have a full house and everything. So, um, yes, okay, sure. Okay, so I'm going to uh, open it up. Do we have any? Um, uh, I, I'm just going to ask. We do it this way because I don't know if we need to be this formal, but I'm going to just request that we do. So let's start with the chair. Uh, if anybody would like to make motions to nominate anyone and then depending on nominations we will take a vote david i'd like to nominate you here <laughs> all right thank you i think you got broken up there <laughs> i was just saying i'm not going to second that so uh I'll so second, I think we... second. <laughs> second you second, second yourself <laughs> okay so uh any other nominations for chair okay so we will take a vote on uh John David Gustafson as chair for the remainder of this term through June 30th. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. We have a chair. Do we have any nominations for vice chair or anyone who would like to uh, express an interest in vice chair? I'd like to nominate Elizabeth as vice chair. I, I would be happy to. I won't second it because it seems tacky, but if anyone else. <laughs> I'll second. Second. <laughs> Elizabeth. All right. So we have a nomination for Elizabeth Keys as vice chair for the remainder of this term. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. All right. Yeah, that is approved. We have our vice chair. Thank you, Elizabeth. And finally, any nominations or interest in the clerk position, which is uh, our role that traditionally does what Elizabeth did tonight, which is reading the applications in and keeping us uh, on track with the agenda. Anybody willing to accept that role? <laughs> And if not, we don't have to have it. We can, you know, I, that's, I don't think that's as critical. We could rotate that one if nobody wants to take that on as a uh, somewhat permanent assignment. Going I'll, take it on as, I'll take you it on as the vice chair. <laughs> <laughs> no one else wants to do it. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna move based on the uh, uh, lack of expressed interest that we will leave the clerk position open for the rest of this term. Can I have a second on that? But I thought Elizabeth said that she would um, do it. Well, she I'll said just, as, as the vice it. chair duties. Yeah, so we'll just rotate <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, so okay, we're, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so motion to <laughs> officially uh, cap the formalization of officers at chair and vice chair for the remainder of this year. Can I have a second? Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right, congratulations, folks. We have uh, formalized officers. Uh, I think we started trying to do this Finally. back in maybe the February meeting. I don't know yeah. when that was, but. Yeah, that's been hanging for a yeah. long time. So. <laughs> well, we finally got all of us here tonight. Yeah, so it's good, yeah. That, we, it's good that we could get to formalize that tonight. And um, yep. Yep, and, uh, and, and thank you, everybody. I really, um, I, I for the number of applications that we had to get through, this one uh, flowed very smoothly. Thank you for all the input and the questions. Charles, mm -hmm. thanks for the, the reports to get us started. And um, unless there are any other items, I believe we can adjourn for this month. Motion to adjourn. Happy holidays, everyone. This might be, right. the, last, this might be the last one for the year, so. Uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> all right. Well, thank you again. Happy right. Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy and, Thanksgiving. Uh, and thanks for the patience with all the virtual. And uh, we are adjourned. Take Good care. Night. Take Good care. Bye-bye. Take care. Good night. Good night. Good night.